We made a plan and nothing worked. Welcome to Yellow Post 34. At least that was the plan. This isn't Yellow Post 34, it's just a leftover campsite. But we're happy to have it. Last night we were having trouble finding a campsite, and word on the mountain was that all sites were already taken. Good thing that this spot was somewhat hidden away from the trail's view. We were attempting to claim a Yellow Post for those joining us on this weekend. We came up Big Bear Mountain on Friday night with John and Susan from the Trailanders. John's got the goodies in his fridge, as you'll find out soon. But it all started with this lumpia. A good snack and a good night. We had a big weekend ahead of us. The next morning came quick. Summer camping means early sunrises and warmer nights. Nothing wakes you up better than a slap in the face. With a steak quesadilla. No veggies allowed on this trip. This specific trip was actually a scouting trip and we're supposed to go look for some yellow post campsites and look for any backup spots for the future. It was the scheduled meetup time, but nobody showed up. Dirt bike after dirt bike after dirt bike after dirt bike kept passing us. We got a chance to ask one of them the situation and they said that there was a race that day. The mountain was really packed. Hmm, over two hours passed, nobody. So we backtracked the trail until we had some spotty reception coming in and found out that two couldn't make it and one was exploring another part of the mountain. <laughs> well, we were losing daylight and had a hot date with 3N08. So we started running the trail with just the MDX and the cruiser. Yes, it was fun running the trail, but we also had some other objectives in mind. One, find a better campsite that we can migrate into and two, keep an eye out for campsites that we wouldn't mind staying at in the future. So onward we went on Holcomb Creek. Now this is not to be confused with the really difficult side of Holcomb Creek. We're talking about the east stretch of the Coxie Truck Trail that spits you out at Holcomb Valley. And on this stretch is one obstacle, a hill, up and down, a little rocky on the way up and then a fun descent into madness. We ran it a couple of times as the rest of the trail didn't have much challenge. The Toyota Land Cruiser easily chugs along with that 4.7 V8 in the belly. As long as she's got traction, she's going up. Picking a good line is important when going uphill. If you get crossed up and lose traction, that's it. You've got to either reset the line or find some traction and bump up the section. Or of course you could just bust out the lockers if you got him. He's doing pretty good. Nice driving Nori. John's weapon of choice is the Acura MDX. He's got some upgrades and increased his capability. The one thing is for certain. That transmission has to bring the fully loaded MDX up the hill. Man look at him go. He's loving it. He's taken up the MDX with just the right amount of momentum. That's good driving, John. Just like that, both vehicles are now at the top. And now, we descend into madness. Land Cruiser's up first. There's a center line that's more rough. In 
John's picking a great line to avoid any body damage. Steady driving and great control over his vehicle. You don't really want to come off rocks with speed. Look at that controlled descent. That's some excellent driving, John. Welcome back to the channel! And a special thanks to the Borderline family that keeps coming back for more. Join the fam and subscribe today for more fun on the trails. Glorious 3N16 Holcomb Valley. And this weekend it was invaded by species like the Corolla, the Camry, the Civic, and I think we even spotted an Accord. 3N16 is easy enough that sedans can roll their way in and claim some spots for themselves. It's the expected weekend zoo. That meant we had to get out of here. Too many people. We backtracked 3N08 in hopes to find something we missed and to explore within a closer proximity of our trailer. When you're on a trail with bikes, don't panic. Just let them pass. All you gotta do is leave room and stop your vehicle. They'll figure it out. And as they pass, they give off a hand signal if they're riding in a group. It might be like this, 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 maybe this. And all it is is just indicating how many more vehicles are passing behind them. So the last guy in the group will give you a big zero. You're in your vehicle, but remember they're on their vehicle. So be extra mindful of their safety and we've got a happy mountain. On the way back, is that a chimney that we spotted? How about relocating here for the night? So Nori and I headed back with the cruiser to pick up our trailer and John and Susan held the spot. I gotta say, bringing an off-road trailer really saves time on packing and unpacking. A convenient way to camp in the backcountry. It also tackles our types of track with ease. A quiet drive through 3 and 08 had us wondering if Yellow Post 34 is actually open. So we checked. And it was. It was vacant. Take a look at this place. Pretty neat. No shade from the sun and no protection from the winds. We're in the middle of a forest. We want trees. It's kind of cool that fires are legal, but we passed on it. Maybe another group can enjoy the spot. We want trees. Forests. Hammocks. And as we rolled back into the chimney site, it's Hui! Hui has arrived! He's a borderline family member! We celebrated the occasion with meat! Look into John's fridge and you'll find every man's treasure! Our favorite types of veggie! John, if you're watching, you are permanently invited to our trips! At this campsite, no legal fire! but. We are surrounded by trees and great views. The chimney is a relic of the past. And that's pretty cool. Someone even got a rug and laid it out in front of the chimney. Ew. But it was grody. So this was officially base camp, but we had to show Hui the hill that all the boys are playing on. Come on, Hui. We trekked along excitedly, eager to play. The GX had zero issues coming up the soft side of the hill. On the flip side, don't flip coming down. Hui stepped out of his vehicle to take a look at some of the lines. Left is probably the easiest to go down on. Center, ooh, and right, uh... He's going center. Why do we do this to ourselves again?
comes down must go up. That's probably not how the saying goes. Oh shoot, doesn't it look like he's picking up speed going uphill? You sure he's going uphill? It's a little faster than I would have taken it, but... But he still made it! What a legend! Up and down like kids on a slide! <laughs> and after spending so much time behind the camera, I thought it was time to get behind the wheel. And so I descended down the center line. Going down's not so bad. But going up on the other hand, going up the center line, no lockers, which means I just had to pick a good line. make it? Whoa! Took it with a bit of speed there. The goal in the bump is to just get up to a point where you do have traction and then control your momentum. Don't bump and bump all the way up to the top. You might break something. Good practice. Made it to the top. Had my fun back behind the camera. Hui was starting to hear his lady's voice from the mountains. Or maybe it was an inner fear. He was either getting back home or getting in trouble. It's alright. Join us again next time, Hui. <laughs> Once COVID is over, we'll go get some of your favorite foot, Pho 79, some Veye. I was handing out borderline burritos tonight. Fresh guac and short rib. Chef Allen was at it again. Want the not so secret recipe? Check out my Monachi Meadows video for more info. What else goes well with uh, condensed milk? Well, basically everything. Make a hell of a lot of guac. Hell of a lot of guacamole. <laughs> I don't think I've ever made this much before. That's a lot of guac. Holy moly. Oh, I don't have an onion. Whatever. And I use IKEA knives at home. I should resharpen them every week. She's making gangster signs? She's probably part of a gang in the Philippines. Oh yeah. Let's get, oh, that smells good. Camp was great. We hammocked the night and hiked the morning. And all of us heard footsteps of a guest that night around 1 to 2 a.m. But nobody bothered to check. But the next morning we found traces of our visitor. Big Kitty. Oh. Remember, what you're looking at is the pad size. This thing's a beast. Literally. The day was paced perfectly and we had time to explore more yellow posts. So we got our belongings together, packed up camp. We did a final scan to make sure we didn't leave anything, checked our vehicles, and headed out to explore. It should be common sense, but don't leave your trash behind. This is how sites and locations get shut down. We were on our way to revisit Yellow Post 34. And to also check out Yellow Post 6 and Yellow Post 7, not too far away. Some were great, others are trashed. Look at nature's gorgeous cardboard boxes, shotgun shells, and glass bottles. Yeah, ew. In the future, I'll make a video about picking up trash and cleaning our trails. It's just too important to neglect. It was our first time heading down the backside of Big Bear via the Coxie Truck Trail. And the Coxie Truck Trail will drop you into Grapevine Canyon, a fun scenic ride. Here's Nori just punching it, even with the trailer. He's taking a nice solid line and I'm getting the training to find out which line I should take. Thanks man! 
On the way down, we picked up a pair of red Toyotas that were headed in the same direction. And together we shared a scenic drive down into Lucerne Valley. So beautiful, and drones are even legal here. But it's so windy that if you put up your drone, it's probably gonna smash into the side of the mountain. Yay! That means no drone shots for you guys over here. I'm not losing my drone. But check out these Toyotas. Very nice people, and I noticed they're part of Corva too. The drive down was just beautiful. Now I believe we may have already entered Grapevine Canyon. This trail is a little bit harder, especially coming up, but nothing a stock 4x4 can't handle. You'll find this descent to be scenic, but be careful coming down. These hairpins aren't too bad, but just don't take the single track motorcycle line. You'll probably regret it. So as we were nearing the end of the trail, the GPS navigated us right through some railroads. And we thought, hey, that's what the GPS says to do, right? The GPS made it look like an actual road. And the more we looked at it, the more we questioned it. But what's the use in questioning it if we already knew our answer? So Nori went up first, and the trick to going through these is you got a sharp angle, so only one wheel gets caught at a time. The side steps are really inhibiting the Land Cruiser's clearance, so we're considering getting some sliders. Now I wonder why Big Bear built this railroad as an obstacle. I'm kidding of course, the danger is real and don't play here. Good job, Nori. You made it through the tracks. Speaking of tracks, it's time to deploy the whack tracks. Let's get the MDX over. Check out that wind. We're getting blown around. Ooh, we kicked out the whack track. If you look at the front, ooh, it's soft. Uh oh, you know where this is headed. We're getting stuck, boys. And things were going as planned until they didn't. So when you're on a railroad track and you can't go forward and you can't go backward, who are you gonna call? I was looking back and forth looking for the train, expecting the worst case scenario. Everybody was sweating, everyone was getting their clammy hands, especially John. But everyone's teamwork, we all worked with haste to get John off the tracks. So he swiftly got together the strap setup and pulled him on through with the cruiser. Thanks Google Maps! And that's what happens when you don't carry your trail book. Let's see, the trail book says when you get to the railroad, you turn right. Thanks Google. I'll leave a link where you can get this trail book in the description below. Super helpful. Oh, I'm getting uneasy just thinking about the experience. Anyway, from here you end up on a newly paved road and soon on to the highway. Nothing went to plan, but this weekend was still a success. We found some cool new camp spots, explored some yellow posts, and had fun with everybody. Now you know why the chicken crossed the road. It's because of Google Maps. John headed north and we headed south. Homebound. We put out these videos hoping you'll get maybe a little bit of information, but mostly that you'd be entertained and maybe get some joy out of it too. Not too many of those emotions these days. Well, let's get through this COVID season safely. I'm wishing you guys all health. I'm Alan from Borderland Explorer, signing out.